Okay, in this video, I'm just going to show you how you can build an NVMe external SSD. And this is similar to the DIY CF Express video that I did. So I'll link up to that in the corner if you haven't seen it. But essentially in this video, I've got myself a one terabyte, 5,000 megabytes a second um, NVMe drive. And I've also got the Ugreen 20 gigabits a second external drive enclosure. And we're just gonna look at how we can put that together. And the kind of reason why I'm doing this, you might just think, well, why not just buy a drive off the shelf? Um, you can do that, but essentially the, um, so the, the actual drive I've got here was £44.51, and then the enclosure, £24.30. Like I say, I'll leave links to it. I got it from AliExpress. You can get it from Amazon for slightly more, but you'll get it quicker. Um, and the idea was I wanted a really quick drive to edit video from and to put it comparatively for sort of 68 quid potentially in the sales I might be able to get like a Samsung T7 Shield one terabyte for slightly more than 70 quid um, but this is actually more akin to something like the um, the SanDisk Pro Extreme SSD and you know that that runs at much higher price tag you're looking at about 120 pounds for a one gigabyte drive of those uh, sorry a one terabyte drive of those so you know comparatively it's quite a good saving so i just wanted to check it out and just see you know how it runs so we're just going to run through it we'll open it all up put it together and we'll do some speed tests and see how it does i think um from the parts that i've bought you know on paper it technically should be transferring about two gigabytes in a second with the bottleneck kind of being the enclosure but you've always got to kind of take this stuff with a pinch of salt i can't actually see it doing that but we'll give it a try and we'll see you know where we're at with it so you can see here we've got the drive and that just comes with um the you know just a just the drive board itself plus one little screw which is just a little thumb screw that you just put it together with and in the external enclosure, we've got the external enclosure itself, plus we've got this um, rubber casing for it. So, you know, you don't have to use that. It just comes with this specific one. And we've also got another thumb screw there, which we actually got with the drive, so you can keep that as a spare. Um, a screwdriver to put it together. And we should also have I can find it inside here. Yeah, we've got a thermal pad as well. So, and uh, obviously a USB cable as well. So, we open that up as well. And then that's essentially the package that that's what we've got in our box there. So you can see we've got a USB-C cable for that. And the input for the drive is just one USB-C input. And that is the whole drive. That's all it is basically. So, um, on the front of this particular unit, we've just got a screw, um, so we can just undo that with the screwdriver we've got in the box. It's a real fiddly screwdriver because it's a bit tiny, but we'll give it a go with that and see how we get on. They're always a bit terrible, they're not magnetic and they're also usually too small to actually do the job with, but we'll, we'll see how we go. And then if we take this out, and what you'll need to make note of is on the inside of here, you can see that we've got this uh, connection point here, so the, the key for the drive. Essentially, this is an NVMe drive and an NVMe uh, board, so you need to make sure that they, they come in two types. Usually, you can have NVMe or SATA, so make sure that you, if you get a SATA board, you get a SATA drive enclosure and vice versa, you know, because you can't really switch them around. Usually SATA um, connections look different. They've got two gaps in there, whereas this one is just one long connection, one little gap, and then a little extra bit on the side. So it's worth um, just making sure that you've got the right connection. You can see here there's multiple screw points, and that's actually because you can fit different size NVMe drives in there. So you can put in a 2230, a 2242, uh, 2260 and a 2280. I've got a 2280 drive here, which is the longest. The shortest drive, the 2230, is actually the one we used on the video for um, the ECF Express card. So technically, you could take that out of the enclosure, pop it into here, screw it in, and it would work in this enclosure just fine as well. So rather than CF Express interface, 
it then becomes uh, USB-C. So what we do is just pick up the board, you can just hold it sort of at the end, just line this up, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it fits into where it's supposed to be. Lay it down fairly flat and it will just click in. You can see it kind of sits up at this, uh, this kind of angle, so we just need to hold that down and then we'll just take our thumb screw. Um, this can be a little bit fiddly sometimes. It's technically a thumb screw, so you don't actually need the screwdriver, but usually I use it anyway. And as I say, this screwdriver's not great, so it might be a bit fiddly. Okay, and then just tighten that off, and then you can see that sits in there nice and flush, that's all done. And then we take our thermal pad, and you'll see it's got like a little film on either side. Make sure you just rip that film off, off of both sides. Um, which side have I pulled the film off? There we go, so take that one off too. Two films. You can place that down on top of your drive. And it should just fit night, like quite neatly in between the um, the thumb screw and the edge of the the edge of there. If it's not quite fitting properly, just pick it up, place it down again. It should fit nice and flush. And then once you're done with that, you can see there's two sort of notches on here. Stick the notches into under there, push it back down, and then we just finish up by putting the screw down. Just make sure it's not loose or rattling. Sounds good. And like I say, you know, you've got the option to uh, put it into the external bit. And then by that point, we're done. We've just made our DIY external drive. So like I say, it's, it's dead easy, you know, it's just five minutes of your time really. And then the next bit is actually, we'll look at on the computer because what we'll need to do is format the drive. So um, all we need to do is obviously plug in one end of USB-C to there. Um, it might be that you don't have a USB-C computer with this specific drive, you don't get a USB-C-A with it, so you might need to use a different uh, cable. Make sure you're using a decent one, because obviously it'll affect your uh, sort of data transfer rates. But uh, this is going directly into my MacBook Pro, and then we'll take a look on the screen and we'll jump into the next bit of the video. Okay, so the first time we plug it in, we're gonna get this message. I'm on a Mac, you know, if you're on a PC, you just need to have a look at um, formatting the drive on there, but I'm just using disk utility on a Mac. So you plug it in, it's not gonna work. Um, you can either eject, ignore, or initialize it. So I'm gonna go for just ignore for the minute. And then you can see here, I've got the external drive. We click on it. You can see it's coming up as a one terabyte drive. And what we can actually do on it is on here, I'm just gonna hit erase and then I'm going to make my one into an XFAT drive. So um, you've got different options. If you're on a PC, you'll have different options to what I've got here. You can make it into just a Mac OS drive. Um, you could do it as MS-DOS FAT or XFAT. For me, XFAT works the best because that works nicely across both um, Mac and PC. And I'll most likely be using this potentially plugging it straight into my camera, using it as a, um, like an external SSD for that. So for me, XFAT is the one. And then I'm just gonna call it um, I'll just call it edit one because it's gonna be my edit drive. And then under this, that's fine. We'll just keep that partition map the same. Hit erase. And then you can see, just takes you know a few seconds because there's nothing on the drive, so it's an easy um, easy reformat. You can see there we've got edit one, and we've just lost like a tiny tiny bit of the drive where it's just reformatted it. And then the next thing we'll do is do a quick speed test to see where we're at. Okay, and then you can see here I've got these files, and this one is. 2.82, so let's give this one a go. We'll put it on there, and you can see it says it's gonna take about 10 seconds to copy the file over. So, you know, not quite as quick as we thought it was gonna be, but still. 
pretty fast. So that's a fairly decent, um, fairly decent speed for it. And then next up, what we'll do is we'll open a couple of speed tools and we'll see if we can uh, here. And then you can see we've, we've got read speeds of about 990 meg and write speeds of about 579 meg. So it, it's running fairly quickly on there. So that is quite a way off of what we thought we could have got from the drive, but I'm going to give it some tests. I'm going to probably shoot some ProRes with it on um, on my G86 and just kind of see where we're at with the um, with the right speeds of them. As I say, I wasn't expecting to be getting the speeds that are um, advertised on the boxes, but um, I'll give it a try and I'll do a, maybe do a bit of a kind of a long term. I'm going to be trying it. Um, you know, with some video editing and uh, shooting some shooting some different types of video as well on it that's quite sort of high intensity. So I'll kind of see how it fares up against that. Okay, and then to run a quick comparison, I'm also going to plug in my Samsung T7 Shield. And then we will do, let's get rid of that. And we'll do a quick speed test on that as well. So we've got um, 990.66 and 579.90. And let's have a look how the T7 Shield holds up against that. So you can see between the two drives, it's not a huge difference. There was a slightly better read and write speed in the first instance on the NVMe drive. As I say, I'll, I'll do some further tests with it and sort of see um, see how it goes. The um, I'd like to get my hands on one of the um, SanDisk Pros to uh, see what the actual read and write speeds are there for those drives. But um, it's certainly a, a slight improvement on the on the drive that I had. So I'll, I'll keep working with it and um, yeah, I'll, I'll do more of a long term video about it. Yeah, if you've got any questions, obviously feel free to drop them in the comments. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you wanna see more content like this, then please subscribe.